wasn't in art. Like people ask me about, you know, the how the art and illustration and design situation in Japan. And like, unfortunately, most of the times I can never answer it because I was not in that field. I was drawing and painting ever since I was little. And um, but especially when I was working on my full-time job, I wasn't really drawing. Like sometimes, you know, like on the weekend, if you have full-time job on the weekend, you're exhausted. And so about 11 years, I didn't draw or paint much. It was very weird to be in the corporate world for 11 years. And before that, I did the regular university uh, study. So that's 15 years of me not considering myself as an artist. And I don't know if it's a, like an answer to your question, but like initially I thought I wasted all my time because I went back to art school at age 34 and most of my classmates were like 17, 18. So I felt like, oh my God, I wasted like whole 15 years of my life. And these are young people who know exactly what they're doing and what they want to do while I wasted you know, my youth not knowing what to do, but then soon realized uh, nothing in your life is a waste because, you know, as a creative person, if you do it for occupation, it's still a business. Even if it's a one person, it's a small business and you have to run it outside of designing and illustrating. And what helps to run the business part is actually the experience in life, whatever you have done. In my case, it was a corporate, and it doesn't have to be corporate. If someone comes from something completely different, it still helps. And how it helps you only understand when you switch the career. And it's a surprise, but it was a good surprise. I'm still very grateful. So if I can go back to my age 18 and I can redo everything over again, I think I will do exactly the same as I did. Although it wasn't fun <laughs> doing corporate for 11 years, it wasn't fun, but it's, it fuels the business side of my art. I'm very glad I went to art school. I went to School of Visual Arts in New York, the uh, short form is SVA, and I'm very, very glad I have the four years of art education. Because when I kind of vaguely wanted to be an artist, but wasn't and doing something else, I always feared those people who went to art school because I felt I was inferior to them and they know something, they learned something I had never learned. And I felt ashamed and you know, kind of embarrassed so in order for me to overcome the feeling that I have for a long time, the only way for me was to go to art school. And I'm glad I did, but you know, unlike what people think that's where you learn skills to become an artist, which you do learn, but you learn more about you know, like how to develop your taste, how to develop your ideas, how to understand what is good and what is not, you know, like, and how to develop, like, how to talk to your own self and make that, like put that into your art. So art is not just about making 3D things, but part of you is in there. You know, those things are more important than the actual skills and those things can actually be learned by yourself if you are very motivated and you know you you have the drive to basically like four years of school is you'll put in the situation that you have to work on your art every day and that is really difficult to do as a person who doesn't go to art school but like not necessarily impossible so you know like when it's it's a little bit like sidetrack from your question, but like often I get often asked like, you know, do you need to go to art school? Do you need to go to great art school? Do you need to go to great art school like SBA? 
the SBA is a great art school. I don't have any regret. You know, it was a great experience. The black box of, you know, the, the fear is gone from me. And that was most important for me. But then it's a luxury not everyone can afford. And so, like, for those people who can, yes, like, art school is great, go for it. But, you know, not everybody is fortunate enough to do that, you know, here in U.S. or there in India or anywhere else. Then, like, don't think that you cannot be a practicing artist without going to art school. It's a lot of self-discipline to make it work on your own. But I know enough people who are in the top of the field who never studied art and be in the creative industry. You know, can be comic artists, can be illustrators, can be graphic designers, you name it, they're there. So, you know, like my experience is one thing, but I don't want people to think my experience is the only experience. As a Japanese person, Japanese kid, you, most of us start drawing because we watch anime and read manga. So like that was my passion, especially manga was my passion. At one point I realized I'm not a storyteller. Like, I mean, like I am, but I am a storyteller in a way I storytell in one picture. And that was like a realization I needed to have. Like looking back, why didn't I know that? I tried to draw comics, like I did two 10 page comics when I was in, in uh, SBA. And if you search online, like I think they're floating around. I, I don't put it on my website, but you know, it's kind of embarrassing, floating around. And I needed to tell those stories. I did it. And then like it took my, like, you know, drained my energy away. And I felt like, I told the stories I wanted to tell. The writers tend to say that everyone, every person on this earth has at least one story to tell. You know, like becoming a writer or becoming a novelist or author means you have more than, you know, one and you can keep producing, coming up with more stories. And as a comic artist, that is necessary. And for me, I felt like, uh, like I got two out. And they are 10 pages, 20 pages total, and I'm done. So, um, uh, like, it's it's good to um, understand as a creative person, your strengths and weakness, you know, your weakness and why. Like, my weakness is, like, I'm not a, you know, consecutive storyteller, and thus I've done my share, and I'm done. And, you know, there are people out there who has all these stories that needs to come out of them and they should be the ones who are creating comics. And so I kind of gave up all together. Well, what's interesting is um, I partially grew up in the US as a um, school kid, age 12 to 15. So like that's when you're, you know, as a person yourself is kind of you know, like the core of yourself is formed around that age. And, you know, when I was in school with all the American kids for four years, I felt like I was foreign and I'm not understanding it. Like I don't belong here. And then I went back and I realized I don't belong there either. And so, after you know spending my high school years college years and work for 11 years while i was becoming more 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 and more adult i started to think you know picking two i i belong to not usa but new york because new york is like everyone from everywhere can come and they can be different and you can be accepted and i really liked that so um that's why i came back and so my art, like, sorry, no, sorry, my artwork feels like it's exactly the representation of that. You might see my work and think, oh, it's very Japanese. You know, Americans say that too, Europeans say that too. But when Japanese people see them and say like, 
um, they call my style American comic style. You know, they call it Amekomi style. You know, that's like my work looks very Americanized depiction of Japan to them. While here, where the American comics is the mainstream, they don't see that at all. So, you know, like, it's, it's weird, but like, I'm in peace with it. Like, I am a very Japanese person to non-Japanese person. And I am very non-Japanese to Japanese people. And my art is too, and I'm okay. Living in New York is great. First, I want to mention that, like, you know, that like, there are a lot of artists who want to come to New York because it's still, you know, like all these crazy things going on in US, it's still the center of design and art and, you know, there are fantastic things happening here. Uh, but like with the internet age, I don't want people to think they have to come here because it's like very like, the living cost is just like insanely high. So you have to work, 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 work to earn money so you can live here. So it's a stressful place to live. And you don't have to do that unless like you desperately need to. But like I've been living here for, this is my 21st year. And I think it will become my 22nd in like a week, you know? And I like the energy here. People come from all over the world whatever their goal is they come here to achieve it if it's a creative person you know they want to test themselves out in the you know biggest pond then then they don't we don't care about becoming the smallest fish in the biggest pond we rather be on the big in the biggest pond which is great because everyone's so motivated and inspiring and by having those energy of creatives, I get inspired as well. But also like even the working class people, you know, they come to New York so, you know, they can have a better life or, you know, they can give kids a better future. You know, like those ideas of everyone in any industry or like any background come here and to, you know, challenge themselves to be better is a great great energy and some people feel it it's too much and which i kind of understand and also like here because i think that the most number of the languages are spoken in the smallest area i think in queens uh in in new york so like people from everywhere are here and then you get to expose to different cultures and peoples and languages and food food is great and um, you can be yourself, you know, my, my English still has Japanese accent, nobody cares, you know, like, as long as you can communicate and, and you dress funny, you look different, like, they don't care for the most part. Whatever you hear about U.S. of the, these, like, you know, like, crazy bad things, especially now happening, like, in New York, yeah, like, there are crazy people, there are racist people everywhere. But for the most part, you can be yourself and you'll accept it. And that's why New York is great. I'm home for what, five months, four and a half months or like something crazy like that. Uh, I mean, like I can go out. I have a dog. So like, you know, we go outside. Even when everyone was home, we're allowed to go outside. But um, I don't know, like, you know, before pandemic, like, you know, before the shutdown, people all over the world said, like, great, you know, finally I get to do, you know, dot, 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 whatever, you know, like, I read 100 books, which I couldn't do before, like, watch all the TV shows, like, you know, finish my masterpiece, whatever, and then realize it's really stressful, you know, like, it's stressful, everything takes three times longer for no reason at all because I'm not commuting so you know I should be doing more but like I get distracted and you know like uh, it's it's hard to be in peace with it because everyone wants to be productive but like you know like I, I have to stress it's okay it's okay and but there are things that's happening you know like things like this like if it wasn't pandemic 
you know, like you from India, although like we know each other, I mean, like from the event, you know, like, do you want to do Zoom interview? And I would have said no, you know, like, no, because I really don't like videos, you know, I really don't like talking to person, you know, who's not there. But then like, I have to teach half the semester of the class, you know, of my, like, thir about 30 students, two classes on Zoom. And, you know, we made it work in like, just about a week or two. And now there are a lot of things that's possible. So right now it's still hard to see the positive side of it, but like, you know, like immediate thing is like how we are connected because we're desperate to connect with people because we don't see our friends, you know, we don't see anyone. I only see my like superintendent, you know, like I don't see anyone. So the desperate to connect is making us do things that we never thought we would do in this short period of time. You know, like remote working, I don't, you know, like I'm not in the office environment, like, but then a lot of the offices started to realize, you know, it's possible to leave some people at home and, you know, they can still carry on work. So I don't know the long term, but I think, we will come out stronger. That I think is for sure. You know, like we get lazy, we, things get routine when things work. When things don't work, we appreciate the things that worked before and something good has to come out of it. Like I don't have a great answer, you know, what that will be, but like, I believe we will, it will, we will come out better out of this.